welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic. So let's see what we've got today. Okay, what are antonyms? We have ant, onym, ant, anti, opposite, onym, word, or even name. So antonym literally means a word that is the opposite. Actually, instead of antonym, in semantics, you can also say opposites. When you have antonyms, you have a situation of antonymy and the words are antonymous. So antonymy is a semantic relation between words. Antonyms are words which are opposite in meaning. What are some examples of antonyms? You would say good and bad, hot and cold, or maybe old and young. How old is old? If you're 20, obviously you're young. If you're 70, you're old. But what about if you're 35 or 40 or 45? You see the way the words old and young relate to each other is different than the way the words dead and alive relate to each other in the sense that you're either dead or alive. You can give only one of those answers. But in the case of young and old, it's not like that. At this point, we need to explore more what it means for words to be antonyms. The same goes with pass or fail. You either pass your exam or fail your exam. There's no in-between, you know. It's complementary antonyms. So complementary antonyms are words in which the negative of one implies the positive of the other. Like what examples mean dead or alive. So negative of dead is positive of alive. These are complementary antonyms. But words like young and old, fast, slow, happy, sad, they're not complementary opposites. Why? Because if I say, are you happy today? You may not necessarily be happy, but it doesn't mean that you're sad. If you're not happy, you're not necessarily sad, right? These are called gradable antonyms. So in gradable antonymy, you can grade them and there is like a gradual transition from one to the other. other. Another example is rich and poor. Obviously, if you're rich, you're not poor. And if you're poor, you're not rich. But if you're not rich, it could also be that you're not poor. You're neither rich nor poor. So in gradable antonymy, you can say there is no such disagreement in the way that complementary antonyms disagree with each other. Like if you're married, you're not single. Okay, so we have studied two kinds of antonymies. It seemed that once I said antonyms, it was a basic question, but I just demonstrated that it's not as simple as that. So the word antonym, there's different kinds of antonymy. And so far I've examined two. So there is another situation in which the things that the words refer to seem to stand on the opposite sides of a relation facing each other. What does that mean? For example, if you go to the hospital and you're the patient, the doctor will take care of you. If I buy something from you, you're selling it to me. In this sense, you can already visualize like a line that the two words stand at the opposite ends of and it's called relational antonymy. So it's like more of a relation. So what does that mean? It means if A is a doctor of B, then B is the patient of A. If A is above B, B is below A. And if I buy something from you, you're selling it to me. So in this sense, a doctor is not necessarily the opposite of a patient, right? But they are at the end of a relation and hence the term relational antonymy. So, as you can see, this is different from complementary antonyms and different from gradable antonyms. If you liked the video so far, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Press the notification bell. Now, I want to go back to gradable antonyms again. So, in gradable antonymy, If you're not old, you're not necessarily young. If you're not ugly, you're not necessarily beautiful. For example, it could be hot and then warm 
and then tepid and then cool and then cold there's this transition so the range of gradability is defined by the noun for example if, if i say a thick pencil and send a thin girl you see a thick pencil although it's thick and although the girl is thin a thick pencil is still much thinner than a thin girl so here when you say thickness the range of thickness or thinness is defined by what noun it qualifies so here because the noun is pencil the range of thickness is way smaller than the range of thickness or thinness of an individual so if i say an early elvis record but if i say a late dinosaur fossil although it's late and not early but still because it's a fossil historically the time range is way way back this is what i mean by saying that the range of gradability is defined by the noun obviously when we say early or late so i would ask what are you talking about are you talking about elvis records or are you talking about dinosaur fossils the, another feature of gradable adjectives is that when you want to ask a question you usually say how old are you you don't say how young are you or you say how tall are you you don't say how short are you unless you're emphasizing that someone is short and then you could ask how short is he but otherwise typically you just use one of the adjectives not the other in asking questions but sometimes this pattern is not always the case like could say how cold or hot something is but some of these adjectives that are more frequent usually there is like a particular pattern of preference in every language in terms of which adjective in the gradable range you use to ask question one last thing there's a kind of relationship that defines words that are reverses and what does that mean for example you either push a door or pull it this is actually ha this has to do with direction you either come or go you either go or return you either ascend or descend which means you either go up or down you either go in or out so in these cases it's more about the preposition it's good to know that when you're talking about antonymy or reverses it's not always about adjectives it could be about verbs it could be about prepositions as you can see here so this could apply to verbs for example you could inflate your bike or deflate it you could expand or contract or you could fill or empty or you could knit or unravel this is about direction what is it similar to do you remember the relational antonymy yes anyways this shows how interesting semantics can be because um, you can create all these subcategories thanks for your time and attention and see you again soon